Hi, I'm Mark Perdue, director of the Rocky Mountain Soccer Camp. Next to me is Sean Stedford, one of our camp coaches. We are here to demonstrate to you the Quality Control Individual Skills Program. If done on a daily basis, this program can greatly increase a player's touch and confidence with the soccer ball. The first part of our program concentrates on self-serve controlling skills. It's very important that we learn how to control the soccer ball that's coming out of the air. The first part of this is very simple. We want to move our feet so that we can keep our feet moving and we can be ready to adjust to the ball. And then we're going to have a toss. Now the toss can be as high or as low as you need to depending on your ability level. Okay, so if we just practice a toss, we're just going to toss it up and let it hit the ground and catch it just to make sure we've got a good toss. Okay, another one, just a nice toss. Now, the first part, we're going to control the ball with the top of our foot or the instep. We're trying to catch it right on the top of our foot, right on the shoelaces. In order to do that, we want to keep our toe pointed up slightly, our foot out in front of our knee just enough so we can catch the ball on our foot. If we were to do it without a toss first, it would be just like setting the ball on an elevator and giving it a ride down to the ground. One more time, set, give it a ride down. What we're trying to do here is take energy away from the ball. So if we were to toss this, we're just trying to toss it up, catch it, and give it a ride down. Another one, toss it, catch it, and give it a ride down. Other foot, toss it, catch it, and give it a ride down. If I, wanted to, if I wanted to direct it, Sean, off to the side, what I might do is turn my foot a little bit to the side. So as I come here, I'm going to turn it and direct it. Then I can move off and maybe make a pass. If I wanted to direct it to the other side, to my right, I would turn my foot slightly this way and direct it off here. Maybe it's a pass. Maybe it's just a way to control and keep dribbling. If I wanted to actually be really fancy, and go backwards, I would lift my toe a bit higher, pull back through, pull it through my legs, and turn and go the other way. One more time, up, pull it back, turn, and go the other way. The second part of our self-surf controlling is what I call half volleys. This is kind of a trap drag. I don't necessarily like the word trap because it connotates that we're stopping the ball dead. This is a way to keep the ball moving. And this is what it looks like, still moving our feet. And what we're going to do is we're going to toss the ball up and just after it hits the ground we're going to use the inside of our big toe to pass the ball to the side. It's really a pass to ourselves. So we're going to toss it, lean, just after it hits the ground we move. Then we use the other foot to go back, just to toss and just pinch it off of the ground. So the idea is to lean back just a bit, have our knee up, our toe pointed up. As the ball drops down, we sweep across and pinch it right off the ground and pass it into a space. Boom. Just like that. So let's try it again. One more time each way. A little toss. Right foot, just a little touch, a little pinch, and the left foot. A little touch and a pinch. And if you notice, if we hit it right, it'll have a slight backspin on the ball. That'll slow it down a bit so it won't take off on us. The third part is the same type of thing, a half volley, but it's with the outside of our foot. Now we're going to cross our legs a bit, lean towards the ball, so we're using our right foot. Just after it hits the ground, we're going to sweep that leg this way and pass it off to our right. So it'll look something like this. Boom. Oh, we should have got shot on that one. Other way, left foot, here it is. Just that little pinch off. Again, just as the ball's coming down, my foot comes down and just pinches it right off the ground and I'm able to take it off in the opposite direction. The fourth part of our self-serve controlling is with our thigh or the top of the leg. What we're trying to do is catch the ball right on the, uh, the fatty, meaty part of our leg and cushion the ball. We're taking energy away from the ball. The, the way we do that is as soon as the ball hits our leg, we're going to drop that leg down and back and lean over. That'll put the ball right at our feet. If we just set the ball there first and tried that, we drop it and it drops right in front of us. We're ready to dribble, pass, or shoot. So if we were to move our legs again, and we're just doing a little drop, drop on that thigh, boom, boom. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to catch it on our thigh, give with it, and drop it down. So we're leaning back just a bit. Now with a little bit of a toss, 
There we go. Toss, control it, bring it down. Another one. Toss, control it, and down. Toss, control it, and down. Toss, control it, and down. If we want to move off to the side, we're going to try to, if we want to move off to our left with our right leg, we're going to hit the inside of our thigh and just direct it into that space. So it's here, just a little direction. Left foot, same thing. Other way, just a little direction in. Now if we're to use our outside of our thigh just a bit to direct it to our right with our right leg, it would look something like this. Just the direction to the side. Other way, up direction to the side. Keep in mind, we don't want to hit the ball close to our knee because if we do, we won't have control. The knee is a hard surface. It will bounce off. We will not have control of it. The last part of our self-serve controlling series is with our chest. Now what we want to do with our chest is first of all we want to have our arms out. If they're in we have a chance for handball and we don't have any balance. We want to have our arms out. We want to bend our legs bend our knees and we want to arch our back slightly. We're going to try to catch it actually right up here underneath the collarbone. So as it hits, we're going to let it hit. We're going to give slightly with our knees and then come forward and the ball will drop forward. Now this is going to be a bit tougher to do with a self-serve. It might be something to have a, a, a parent or one of our friends help by tossing the ball to us. Now if we're just to do it real slow motion, we're just going to toss it back to our chest, chin up and out of the way, give with it and collapse forward. One more time, a little toss, give with it, collapse forward. Now, for real, what we're going to do is move our feet, we're going to toss it up a little bit higher, really give with it, arch backwards, then come forward. So it's here, arch back, and then come forward. One more time, up, arch back, and then come forward. If we want to direct the ball off to the side, what we want to do is add in the toss, as the ball is going up, we want to turn our body sideways so when it hits, it directs it into a space here. So let's try that. So it's up, turn, direct it into a space. Going back the other way, up, turn, going back the other way. Now I mentioned that it may be a, a better idea to have someone toss the ball to you. So I'm going to toss one to Sean here and he's just going to control it and play it back. So this is a little bit more realistic to the game. If I can toss it in, he can control it and play it back. If he wants to direct it to the side, he certainly can. Either way, a little direction, and one more the other way. It's a little bit more realistic to the game and a little bit easier to perform. Switching gears a bit, uh, this part of ball control uh, works on our agility and our quickness and our touch on the ball. We call these ball touches. The first ball touch series we will do is touching the ball on top of the ball with the soles of our feet. And basically to start off with, what you do is you put the ball a comfortable distance out in front and have it on the, uh, just underneath your toes. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump in the air and switch feet and touch it with the other foot. Now that would count as one. And then we would switch again, two, and then again, three, four, five, six, and so on. The better we get at this, the less we have to look at the ball. So initially, if we're looking at the ball as we're doing it, that's okay to do. But the better we get, if we can get our heads up so that we're doing it without looking at the ball, then we're doing better, okay? So now, this is uh, what it would look like if Sean and I were both gonna do it in fast motion. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, for our test, we do this for one minute. We count how many touches we can do in the one minute. Ready, set, go. The second ball touch series will be between our feet using the insides of our big toes or the inside of our feet in touching the sides of the ball. And basically the idea is this, is to bend our knees, get our heels off the ground. And we're just going to lightly pass the ball back and forth between our feet. And what we want to try to do is get a rhythm going where the ball stays between our feet and we're not moving anywhere. 
Now sometimes we will move a little bit, but the best thing to do is to do it without moving. Okay, so Sean, we'll do it together. And we'll go pretty fast on this. And the faster you go, we still want to try to keep count. Okay, ready, set, go. The third section of our individual skills program will be dribbling moves. These are moves that can be used in the game to beat defenders. We'll try to show you some aspects of these that will help you out as you're practicing them to understand how they could work in a game. They will have basically three parts. They will have a fake, a change of speed, and a change of direction. Also, we will hope to show you some advanced versions of these so that once you master the one, you can also start to progress to the next level. The first one is called a step over move. And basically the idea is this. The ball is in front of us, and what we're going to do is we're going to take, I'm going to take my right foot, and I'm going to step over the ball to the outside of the ball, dip my shoulder, lean, and put all of my weight on that right foot. As I'm doing that, my left foot hits this side of the ball. I'm going to push off my right foot, accelerate into the space, and dribble off. One more time in slow motion, what we're going to do is Moving our feet, we're going to step over it, push, accelerate. Now, in the game, the defender is probably right in front of me. So if Sean is the defender, what I'm going to do is dribble, slow down, and then I will take a step, and that will be my fake. Get the defender to lean so I can push it and accelerate by the defender. So if we were to do this in fast motion for our, for our program, actually, go ahead and get this ball, Sean. If we were to do this in fast motion for our program, we'd be doing five times each way. So it would look something like this, dribbling, step, push. Then use the other foot, step, push. Other foot, step, push. And we're trying to accelerate into the space, make sure that we are selling that fake and accelerating off the other way. An advanced version would look something like this in fast motion, it is this. In slow motion, it is the step over, hit the ball with my left foot, pass it back with the right, and accelerate. If the defender's in front of me, I'm going to be dribbling. I'm going to step. It's the same effect as the step over. It just adds a little bit of flair to the move. The second move is what we call a drag back. We'll show you several variations of this, but here's the simple, the simple drag back move. If we're facing this way, we're dribbling, we're going to step on the ball, stop it, pull it back, make a wide step beside the ball, take it the other way with our other foot. Step on it, pull it back, step beside the ball, take it with our other foot. So if we do it in fast motion, we're just back and forth, stepping on it and going. Step on it and go step on it and go. Maybe we even fake a kick that way. Fake the kick, pull it back, go the other way. Some advanced versions would be a pull back, but a push at an angle with the inside of our foot. Pull back, push at an angle. All right, so we pull it back, push it at an angle, go off the other way. Pull it back, push off at an angle. A third version would be to do the same thing, but push it with the outside of our foot. So we pull it back, push it off to the side, same foot, outside of the foot. Same foot, outside of the foot. Now, where's the defender in this? If Sean is a defender, he could be right in front of me. I'm dribbling this way, stop, pull it, turn and go the other way. But it's very important that I can do this with the defender behind me. I'm dribbling beside me, step and turn out of it. I'm turning away from pressure.
The next move is called a cut or a check. And what we're basically going to do is be going in one direction and we're going to cut the ball and head back the other direction. Uh, it's very important when we try this cut move that we don't stand directly behind the ball. Because if I stand directly behind the ball and try to cut it back the other way, I'm going to cut it right into my other foot. So what I want to do is be off to the side a bit. If I'm using my right foot, I'm going to come to this side plant on my left foot, and again, the ball's out in front, so we're going to actually bend our knee, reach for the ball, pivot, cut it with the inside of our big toe, then move off the other way. Let's try that again. So we're going one direction. We're going to plant, reach, pivot, cut it back the other way. We're going to do the same thing heading back the other way, and if we're going to do it faster, it's just cut, cut, going one way, maybe pretend to kick it and cut it back the other way. Pretend to kick it, cut it back the other way. Now, the advanced version is called the Cruyff. And the Cruyff looks a little bit different. Instead of standing off to this side with my right foot, I'm going to stand to this side. If the ball would roll, it would roll right between my legs. Now, I'm going to balance on my left leg, pivot, point my toe to the left, cut it behind my leg, go back the other way. Reach, pivot, cut it back reach, pivot, cut it behind your leg. So we're going back and forth. Now when we do this in the game, the defender is at times right beside us. If the defender is beside me and I want to do the regular cut, I'm going to use my left foot, cut out of it, so that I turn away from the defender. If I turn into the defender with my right foot, good chance the defender can get the ball. However, I can turn into the defender if I use the Cruyff move. I'm dribbling, Cruyff out of it, and go off the other way. So it's a move that I use when I'm shielding the defender, cut it back, go the other way. The fourth move is what we call the any outy. In Brazil, they call these the elastico moves. We call it the any outy because it uses the inside of our foot and then switches to the outside of the same foot. Here's how it would look in slow motion. Basically, I have my legs spread apart, my heels are off the ground. I'm going to balance on the foot that's away from the ball and point the, the other foot down. So my left foot toe is pointed down. I'm going to drag the ball with the inside of that foot towards my right foot, come around the ball, push with the outside of my foot, and accelerate. So another time, a little bit faster, spreading my legs wide, in, hop, push it out, accelerate. It's very important in this move that we don't have the move take place anywhere except for in between our feet. I want the whole move to happen in between my feet. If it doesn't, if I happen to go out in front of my feet a bit, it would be like this, in, out, and the ball would run right to the defender. If I end up crossing my legs, it would end up like this, in, out, and then I'm stuck and I can't really accelerate after the ball. So what we're going to do is just do uh, some with our alternating feet. Here we go. So it'll be in, push out, accelerate, other foot, in, push out, accelerate, other foot, in, push out, accelerate, other foot, in, push out, accelerate. And that's uh, the any outy move. An advanced version, and, and personally, one that I like a bit better, is the outy any. It's just the opposite. And what we're going to do same idea, but we're going to push the ball outside first and then cut it in. One more time. We're going to push it out and then cut it in. It's really important that we make a big reach. The fake of this move is that it's a big long push. So I'm going to push it wide, cut it back, and accelerate the opposite way. So if we're to do it for real, it's a push out, cut it in. Other foot, push out, cut it in. Other foot, push out, cut it in. One more time, push out, cut it in. Now the defender on this, the defender is right in front of us. So with the any outy, my fake is the any. I'm going to be dribbling inside, hop, push it outside, and accelerate. With the outy any, same idea. I get that defender to bite a bit with the push out, then I cut it in and accelerate. So the defender is in front of us on the elastico moves. The last move in our series is called the figure eight. And this is again a move to turn and change direction. 
What we're going to try to do with the figure eight is to have a great fake and then a, a spin and a cut out of uh, the fake the opposite way. Ball's in front of us. We're moving our feet. What we're going to do is we're going to step across the ball and that's our fake. But we want to keep that toe pointing straight ahead because that allows us to pivot and push off of that right foot and cut it back with the left. So again, ball's here. We're going to step across it and cut it back. One more time. A good hard fake. Step across it, spin out of it, and cut it back. So if we were to do this for real, we would be moving, dribbling, step across, cut it back the other way. Moving, step across, cut it back the other way. Moving, step across, cut it back the other way. Moving, and across, and cut it back the other way. The defender on this, if Sean is a defender, again, I like to do it when I'm shielding the defender. We're dribbling this way, I fake hard step, I spin out of it. Hopefully my fake makes him bite, and he goes the opposite way, and I cut out and go the other way. And that is the figure eight. The last part of our program is ball juggling. Ball juggling is far and away the best way that you can practice on your own that will help your skill and confidence. The first part of juggling that we're going to do is called foot juggling. And what we're going to use is we're just going to use the top of our foot. We're going to touch the ball just about uh, where the shoelaces are. But our toe doesn't want to be straight up. We want to point it out uh, just slightly. And if we start it here, the motion of our leg is simply this. We're swinging from our lower leg. If I were to do just one at a time, what I'm going to do is drop it and just punt it to myself. The other foot, we want to keep our feet moving to adjust, but we're just doing one at a time. When we actually do the test, we're trying to keep track of how many touches we have without catching the ball or letting it hit the ground. Now, every time after my foot hits the ball, my foot goes to the ground. So we're just going to do some foot juggles here. And we're going to try to keep it going. Notice that the ball has just a slight backspin, and it's going maybe waist or knee height is all the higher it's going. And it's just trying to keep it going. We get one point every time we touch the ball before it hits the ground or before we catch it. The next juggling series will be thigh juggles. And what we're going to do for thigh juggles is we're going to lean back slightly. We're going to have our leg come up to meet the ball so it catches just ab above the knee and we can pop the ball straight up. We want to have our arms out for balance. If we are to do it just to practice, we want to drop the ball and just pop it up. Just pop it up. We're going to alternate. Again, once the ball hits my leg, that foot goes to the ground. And so if we were to keep it going, it would be something like this where we have balance we're leaning back and we're relaxed the ball has a slight forward spin and it's going maybe as high as my neck or my head and we're keeping it going kind of in a marching motion The next part of our juggling series is head juggling. Now this may be a little bit harder for, for younger or more inexperienced players because we have a tendency to be afraid of the ball. What we're going to do is to start with, we're just going to toss the ball up to our forehead, keep our eyes open, and just knock it back into our hands just to kind of get used to the ball. Eyes are open, hitting it right in the middle of the forehead. And we're just tossing it just to get used to the ball, how it feels when it hits our head. Now for head juggling, what we're going to do is we're going to tilt our neck up and tighten our neck muscles. We don't want to head the ball like this. We want to keep our neck muscles tight. We want to bend our knees. And as the ball is here, we're actually going to bounce with our knees and our feet to head the ball. So if we're just to do a couple here, it's just a little bit of a head juggle. And we're just keeping it going as long as we can. Finally, for our juggling series, we will try to keep the ball in the air with whatever method we can, foot, thigh, or head. And all we're trying to do is just keep the ball going, 
using those parts of our body. The feet are probably the best way because that's what we use most in the game. The thighs are the easiest way because that's the biggest surface area. The head is the hardest to keep going and we don't usually juggle the ball with our head during the game. This video has been designed to introduce you to a technical workout program that when used on a daily basis will efficiently and effectively improve any player's skill and confidence with the soccer ball. You can even use the enclosed charts to keep track of your progress. As your skills improve, hopefully you will challenge yourself to vary, add to, and expand these techniques to create your own specific and individualized program. Practice regularly, challenge yourself, improve yourself, but most of all, have fun.